All right. Hey, folks, Chris Garlock here with Michael Redman back with another edition of uh, AlphaGo versus the world. So far, uh, AlphaGo undefeated. I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seats to see whether this will be the time that AlphaGo will lose. <laughs> uh, don't take that bet. Um, so, who is our victim today? Okay, Cheng Yaoye, uh, Nine Dan from China. Um, and he's, let's see, um, maybe one of the more experienced players. I, I think he's about 30 at the time of this game. Not quite 30, he's in late 20s, maybe. Mm -hmm. He's a three time world champion. Um, so he's, he's a very prominent player again. And so in this whole series, set of games, like from the 15th game to this point, we're having a, a sequence of world champions uh, playing against AlphaGo. Oh, like jou jousting, throwing themselves against them. And, and there's one other thing we should mention, a uh, special thing, American players, of course, uh, will remember this name, right? Cheng Yao Ye. Yeah, he beat one of our favorite American players, right? It I wasn't... Think, uh, I think it was uh, Steve, Steven, tell me, it was, it was the other way around, right? Oh, okay. Wow. Well, that was yeah. special. So an American yeah. beat him. Ah, very good. Okay, so can I get into the game now? Yes, please. Oh, yeah, okay. So Cheng Yao, he has the black stones. And this opening again. So this is, uh, again, it's an opening where, uh, same opening as Kaze played, I think. So this is a point where AlphaGo would be playing this corner enclosure. Mm -hmm. And um, if White plays something like this, then we, we see this pattern in a, a number of the games played in this series. But uh, when Black plays a Kakari, White's going to play a Kakari too. So it's, up to this point, it's the same opening as Kajai played. That's right. And I think Kajai played a two-space pincer here. Uh, but Cheng Yao is going to try out the one-space pincer. <laughs> you think, think they compared notes? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, at least they were watching each other. I'm pretty sure right. of that. Yeah. You had reminded me, because I keep thinking, you know, that this took place, but all of this took place over just a, a really compressed period of time. So it's not like people had, you know, days or weeks to study these. I mean, this was very fast. Definitely. Like, I think if this is game number 21, so I think it might have been the third day. I, in general, AlphaGo was playing 10 games a, a day. Wow. Although over the New Year's, I think there was a, a, a bit of an, a slight irregularity. But um, mostly it was playing 10 games a day. So this could have been the third day. All right. Um, white plays here. This has become a standard move nowadays. I think that it was interesting that when Kajay played this move, white actually played a pincer on the left. So it's interesting to see that the one space difference, now white is playing a move. It's just that one extra space in this area that gives that much more space to white and makes the lower side more important, maybe. Um, mm. A very subtle difference. And black attaches here. So this is the natural follow-up. I think that now, if I were, um, I didn't actually research this board position very deeply with Lila or Katago. I think that um, my experience is that they're, almost, they're usually suggesting this move. And just playing this one exchange and then playing something on the side is what they usually um, suggest. Otherwise, a move that humans sometimes, young players like to emulate is this one. Now, this is also a move that some AIs suggest. And when black pushes through and cuts, it's gonna get insanely complicated. So I, I don't wanna go into that now. No. I don't actually have anything Save it, save it for the book. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I'm not, I, this is not something that I would advise people to do, actually. It's very complicated. Um, I might even hesitate to do it myself. Wow. This one, this one is also sort of uh, AI recommended, and it's something that um, I can I feel a bit more safe in recommending people to try out. So black white played here, and black played this. Locally, this is um, a pretty good shape for black. When white plays here, if black had played one more move to finish off this white stone. Um, I think that would have been better. I think this would have been a very efficient shape for black. Mm. Although black has four stones in this area um, for the one white stone. So it, it took black three three moves. 
where a usual corner enclosure would take only two moves. It is a very, very solid shape. So like uh, none of Black's stones are really wasted. All of these three stones, although the final stone here is, is a sh very short extension, this exchange on the side, this exchange for the white stone for the black stone is, is, is a, a great um, profit for black. It mm. really makes black's position stronger. And so this is, um, locally, this is a very good shape for black. In the game, uh, black extended here. I don't really like this move. Yeah. So it's sort of the wrong direction, isn't it? Well, uh, when white has split the side here, um, the two directions are mei, basically. There, white has an extension here and an extension here. And so um, this is just the Wariuchi shape, which actually is pretty unusual for a computer program to play. It is. Now. Um, but it, it is working because white can extend in one way or the other. So this is a move that, again, it's a move that it's relatively easy for a human player to play, easy for me and easy for me to explain to people because white does have space to play a two-space extension. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ways that um, AlphaGo in this version is relatively easy for us to understand. Like modern computer programs, uh, will be playing in the three three point, or actually, in this case, I would have a tendency to want to continue in the lower right corner, but like you would see computer programs just jump into the three three point two. Mm. So this this kind of play, it can be played, but it's relatively hard for us to understand. And the game black extended here, and I, I don't like this move because it does give white the opportunity to to extend here and live in the corner. So I don't like that so much. Um, I don't think the um, Black's winning percentage is not going down so drastically, um, especially if Black had played this way and taken Sente and being able to play towards the upper left corner. I think this would have been about even as far as uh, Katago was concerned. In the game Black played here, this was also a very popular Joseki in which Black will be able to now, if white plays the hanging connection, black will be able to press like this and give white a very low shape. White has to add a stone to the corner, and so then black, black would play away. Otherwise, um, when white extends here, this is the game variation. When white extends here, black gets to cut here and capture the corner stones. So locally, this is a valid way to play. Um, maybe a tad slow, like black has made this position in every... Um, Every sequence of moves we've had here on the right half of the board, every time white has ended up with sente, white has ended up with the initiative. So in the sequence here, white ended up with the initiative to switch to the lower side. And in the trade here, white ended up with the initiative to play this move on the left side. Every time white is getting sente. So this is a pattern that you see a lot in AlphaGo's games, and it sort of bodes badly for the, the human player. But actually, when I uh, looked at this with Katago, it was giving White a 52% winning percentage. Mm. So that's not really that bad. It's, it's a lot better than most of the players are at move. It, this is move 28. So we're, he's lasted 30 moves with only yeah. losing percentage points. That's a lot better than most players. I will say that when I was uh, doing a lot of playing with the AI, I did discover that the more that you could Tanuki you did hang in. You you always lost, but you you would last longer by tanuking. It was it was uh and 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 then when you start doing that in human games, of course, you okay. actually win. <laughs> oh really? That's an interesting strategy. Um, in this position, actually, AlphaGo has a very interest. I mean, Leela had a very interesting move to show me just playing this exchange and then playing here. And I like this move. It it does set up an attack against White. Uh, when black continues with a move, one of these two moves, black can still attack white. So this is forcing white to surround the lower side and building some potential here. Mm. But the game move looks fairly reasonable, actually. Playing here is a reasonable move. And I think black's real mistake was when black played here, which was um, a passive move. It was a passive move, 
And this pattern here, which happens quite easily, this is a fairly common pattern that was happening before AlphaGo. Um, and it's just a bit painful for black because if black connects here, white will be able to, later in the game, white will be able to connect here and black does not have two eyes. So it's a group that could potentially uh -huh. be weak. That was the whole point of white's peep here because if white connects immediately, then black gets a living shape with this move. So white peeps first, and if black connects, white gets to, maybe not immediately, but later on white will be able to play here and attack. So black takes the one stone. But the fact that white has this cut to look forward to makes it a slight advantage for white. So at this point of the game, white's already something like 57% winning percentage. So just to go back to that, uh, to a few moves, uh, I'll go back here, uh, excuse that. So um, black played the double honey here. This is a point where this move um, was not so popular after, I mean, before AlphaGo, but it's, it's made a comeback. Um, and in this case, it, it is very effective because when white uh, plays this way and black um, goes like this, then the next move on the lower side, you can see that black is threatening these stones. So if black follows up now, black's next move would be on the second line here. Black can force white on the second line or on the third line, either way, black's gonna force white to have a very small life there on the lower side. And this will be very satisfying for black. So this variation, also, also if we look at the white cut here, in this case, black can get more of a wall and then the next move will be immediately attacking at this point. Whew. And just taking away white's eye space and black is going to get a nice position in this general area. So this Joseki is actually playable for black. It's okay for black. Mm -hmm. So it would have been more aggressive to play this move. There was a period where people were just worried about this variation too much, but um, with these, um, with computer analysis, I think this this variation has made a comeback for black, and it's become more mm -hmm. popular. The double honey is clearly much easier to use, uh, and it's easier to get to a living shape. But the the cut there that's left behind, it is a bit painful. So it's a kind of a passive way for black to play. Right. Just to continue a bit more, white plays this move, and this settles this group makes it a strong group. And by making that a strong group, white has created the, the threat of a three queen invasion there. And black followed up with the honey. And uh, pincers here. This I'll just show you a few more moves. Right. Um, white invades here and plays this. This is pretty standard strategy that Hewans played also. But the moment white, this is already looking um, like white has a slight advantage um, just at this point, yeah. This was maybe the black's last losing move. I think black, um, when white cuts here, white's winning percentage goes up to about 70%. And Katago says that the game is, maybe black wins by one point on the board. I, I have to say Chen Yaoya did very well in this game because this is move number 70. And maybe the first move, the first game in which I've I've shown you up to game seven, to move seventy. Before uh, yeah, that, yeah. it was just maybe a couple of points that uh, White was winning by. If Black had uh, played this connection, and something like this might follow, in which Black not only gets the territory on this side, but also gets to finish the upper side territory. And the game cutting here was just so big in territory. And uh, later on in the game, you're going to see White attacking black on the upper side also. And so it's just the fact that this makes this so much more solid, it's gonna make it much more difficult for black to finish that upper side territory. So if black had played here, he would have, I would say black is still in the game. If it was human, human, black would still be in the game. But after white cuts here, it's just about all over. So finally, uh, this is where AlphaGo has, has taken the lead. A uh, quick question before we wrap up, uh, is, is your sense that this was something specific about about how Chen handled it, or do you think that perhaps it was just 
kind of getting a, a better feel? Well, you know, he he didn't really play anything unreasonable. He played a very uh -huh. steady game. And part of it is that move that I didn't like, the double honey here in the corner. Right. Uh, he, he's not um, going on any adventures here. And he's playing thickly, a very solid game. And, and that came kept the game very close. And, like, it's not a different... Uh, in a human human game, he would be catching up in the middle game to the end game, maybe. But mm -hmm. it, it just didn't um, it didn't go in that direction because his opponent was AlphaGo, and that was the that was the losing mistake. That is uh, playing against AlphaGo is maybe losing. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying he lost before he placed his first stone. Well, that's encouraging. He was playing a strategy that would um, maybe have a very slight disadvantage for Black. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be anything that would actually lose the game for him in a human human game. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool game. Cool game. I like the way and, and, and good for him for getting you know, getting that far. And especially this is this is still early in the series, you know. So yeah, that's it's almost pretty... a record for the whole series, actually. Seventy moves. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll have to keep an eye on that in future games. Thank you, Michael. Thanks everybody for watching, and we will see you all next time.